Putting comments in the code is something that all of us do on a regular basis. The proper use of comments is to compensate for our failure to express ourselves in the code. Well, yes, it is a failure. The moment you're putting a comment in the code, it's kind of a failure. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Clean Code series and today we will talk about comments. I do lots of code reviews across all the products at Google and one thing I really condemn is comments. Well, sometimes even my own code has comments, which is slightly embarrassing. Okay, we will conclude the reason towards the end of, of the video. Let's continue. Okay, let's take a look at the valid comments. The first type is the legal comments. Corporate standards sometimes enforce us to write some legal comments on top of the files. They are like mostly related to copyright kind of stuff. Let's take a look at this uh, piece of chunk taken from the Android open source project. Again, which is very evident from the comment itself, it is probably related to some kind of copyright. So this is licensed under the Apache, Apache or Apache, I don't know. So yeah, these kind of comments are like, they have to be there. Nothing can be done. The second type is the informative comments. Sometimes we do need to provide some basic information information with a comment. Let's take a look at the code. Okay, so if you see here, we have a pattern which is quite complex to understand what it is all about. It's nice to have a comment there which which actually tells the reader what this pattern is trying to match against. Then similarly, we have time and there are no units specified. So even here, it's kind of okay to mention the units in the comments, but we can slightly do better. Then the next type is explanation of intent and clarification. So this is like the most appropriate and the only kind of comments you really need to write. They should be written only when the code is ambiguous or for some reason is not very evident why the code is written in this way. Let's take a look at some code. So this piece of code is from Android open source project and you see a very large comment. It's not very common for Java code to run the garbage collector manually. So here it kind of makes sense. Let's take a look at some other code as well. Again, another example from AOSP. So we have a default case in a switch statement and nothing is being done here. It's just printing a log, that's it. It's kind of fine to have a comment over here as well so that the reader is aware that why nothing is being done here. Okay, the next type is warning of consequences. It still falls under the intent or clarification, but here things are more on the cautionary side. Let's take a look at some code. Okay. So here you see it mentions uh, verification is ongoing, not safe to clean up the session yet. So yeah, the reader might be wondering that this, why the session is not being cleared over here. So it kind of puts a caution here, which is fine. Another example, okay, this code is from game manager service and okay, there is some loop uh, which is iterating on all the packages and gets the game mode. The comment says, make sure the user settings and package configs don't conflict. That is the user setting is set to a mode that no longer available due to config manifest changes. So most of the time we won't have to change anything. So it kind of explains why the code is written in a way it is right now. So again, in these kind of situations, it's totally fine to write the comments because it's not very evident why the code is written in a way. Okay, the next type is to do comments. So sometimes it's reasonable to leave to do notes in the form of like to do comments. Let's take a look at some code. Okay, like this, uh, this says that okay to do it mentions a bug number replace the following shell commands with direct api calls so again these type of to do comments are fine as long as you have some kind of actionable item which in this case is the bug then there can be java doc or basically the documentation comments which is totally fine so if you see the code here there are like plenty of uh, aosp is just one example there are plenty of other open source code where you see lots and lots of comments on public methods which is totally fine and it's even better if all the public methods do actually have the java doc comments and this also becomes super critical if you're working on a library which will be used by thousands of developers and make sure you utilize all the features that the language provides and follow the best practices okay let's take a look at some bad comments like the first type is mumbling let's go to the code okay uh so we have a code here which says get user and takes in the id okay it says that validate the id but it is just reading from the database. No validation is done. And over here it says like do nothing. I'm not sure what this, what these comments mean really. Ah, uh, that's weird. So it's more like the comment is there, but it's incomplete. Well, the next one is the most important one, redundant comments. So this is the most common mistake that all of us do. And I will take them towards the end along with an exercise. Then we have misleading comments. I'm pretty sure the engineers watching this video having some experience with code 
reading and reviewing might have seen a situation where you felt that this comment doesn't really reflect what the code is doing and you're like whoa okay and then you realize it would have been better if the comment was not there at all. And then there are journal comments. Sometimes people start putting up the history in the comments, which is like blatantly wrong. It doesn't make any sense to have all the history in the file. Let the version control system do its job. Okay, and then we have noise comments which is like unnecessary noise, which don't add even an iota of information. Let's take an example. Okay, we have this uh, get day of the month and the Java doc says returns the day of the month. They even have add return block that says, and even the method says the day of the month. Well, why do we even need these comments? Okay, so the next thing that the book mentions is don't use a comment when you can use a function or a variable, which we will take as part of the exercise. Then the next type of a bad comment is uh, position markers. So sometimes you actually want to separate out the code in separate like separate blocks by using comments let's go to the code we have some getters which we have separated by a code comment then we have some setters which we have again like separated by a code comment these don't make a lot of sense if the methods are already ordered in some consistent way now since the getters are already together and the setters are already together it doesn't make a lot of sense to put these comments in between and then we have closing brace comments. Well, another one mentioned in the book where some programmers end up writing the name of the block when the braces end. It maybe is helpful when writing long functions, but if you're writing long functions, you're already writing bad code. Just split it into smaller functions. Let's take a look at the code quickly. Okay, so we have a function that says uncaught exception and whenever we have a block which is ending, we have a comment. Here we have this catch block is ending, this if block is ending, again catch and while not really helpful there are a few other examples of bad comments which i think are too obvious to spot like commented code too much information in the code or where the comment is not actually relevant to the code itself okay so coming to the question do we even need comments and let's do a quick exercise to understand that okay let's take a look at some code the name of the method is send http requests it takes in your url method and headers body if we just take an overlook of this method it looks great lots of good comments and pretty clear what the code is trying to do along with the comments okay let's try to see how the comments can get misleading very quickly okay and right now it says uh, get the http response code and message let's say in the future we want to get the headers get response headers now this may happen actually <laughs> Okay, so what to do now? Should the author go here and edit the comment? Well, they can, but can we make sure that every every future editor of the code will do that? Not really. So very soon, this comment will get misleading and the similar thing can happen with the other comments in this function as well. Let's try to improve this code and see where we can get to. The other thing is the redundancy. So all these comments are redundant to me. They are simply repeating the code and not really adding any additional information. Okay, let's remove this. It requests the headers. Let's remove this as well. Okay, what we can do over here is we can probably create a method that says is set up request that takes in uh, or let's say set up connection which takes in the URL and the method and the headers because this will anyway be common for Okay, so the next thing that is happening is writing the request body to the connection output stream and th this is where the HTTP request is actually made. Okay, let's remove the comment and we, I think it's fine. Uh, they, these are like just four or five lines. So maybe let's, let's keep them instead of like creating a new method. All right, uh, get the HTTP response code. Let's remove this because there might be a few other variables in the future. This is also fine. And then the next thing is if the response code is a success, then parse the response. Similarly, if it's error, then parse the error and throw the error as well. Okay, so this is slightly involved, but you see as I read the code, I was able to come up with some methods okay what i said if it's a success so if is success let's pass the response code okay so we can remove all of this we can probably move this in a method and we can call it as parse response that's it uh, we need to give it the input stream
And let's do the similar thing for this other part of the uh, method as well. All right, now just try to read this code now. Okay, there is this method that sets up the connection. Then we call the set do output true. I think it has to do something with the request body. Then we write the body. We get the response code. We see if it's a success. We parse the response and return the response. If it's an error, we parse and throw the error. And the code is self-documenting now. You don't even need the comments. You are using some really good function names and that those are actually doing the job for you. Okay, I would like to leave you with this thought that comments do not make up for bad code. And the main motivation for bad code is that we know it's confusing and we know it's disorganized. So we say to ourselves, oh, I'd better comment that. No. You better clean it okay another reason why comments are bad is if a critical piece of code is supposed to live for five years things go for a tumble when someone changes the code but forgets to change the comment or the other way around and if this thing keeps on building as we uh saw in the exercise it'll make the life of the reader pathetic so i hope you learned a lot from this video the next episode will go live hopefully next week and yeah thanks for watching don't forget to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and yeah this is 100 gb signing off bye